So welcome to the last, I think, talk of the Edge days. Uh, we're going to talk about how to deploy models, AI models, to the Edge. And my name is Miriam Fentanis. I work as a product manager in Red Hat on the OpenShift AI BU. And I'm Jacqueline, or Jay Kohler, and I work as an engineering manager on the same team as Miriam. Perfect. So let's start. Um, so first of all, uh, we set out to bring capabilities for AI lifecycle management to the edge. And the first challenge that we have was really defining what edge was. Basically, because we saw that the closer you get to user devices, embedded systems, microprocessors, the more specific the use case is and the more complex the hardware, there is no um, way to have uh, homogeneous APIs the way we have in the cloud. So we understood that the same way the cloud native, it's kind of like a paradigm. Edge, um, edge computing, it's also a paradigm where you have these myriad of power computing somewhere outside of the IT or of the core. Uh, organization. So we try to design all of the components for the AI model, thinking about what were the challenges to put AI computing on this continuum between the core and the edge. And we found that basically there were three main challenges. The first one being that the closer we move to the user device, the more constrained resources we found. And it was not only about uh, constraints on computing or on uh, battery. It was also resources, uh, constraints about how do you move uh, all of that data that's generated at the edge uh, back to the core or back to other nodes in the edge where it can be processed. Uh, the other thing is also uh, resources in IT people at the edge. So even if you have a server room in a store uh, in large retail, um, uh, people doing uh, edge, you normally don't have IT personnel. So you have also to account that whatever architecture or design you have, it has to be very simple because everything extra is usually a burden. The second thing was um, everything revolves really around data. So the pool uh, of the data gravity and all the concerns related to data sovereignty, uh, data privacy, data security was one of the core aspects of Edge. And then the third one was really about management of all of these Edge nodes where you have to, uh, most of the times you are working on air gap disconnected environments or on environments that have intermittent connectivity. So you have to account for operations that need to be unmanned, um, automated, and they have to be very resilient and ideally uh, they have to self-heal. So with all of that in mind, we wanted to be able to have or to control the whole life cycle of an AI model at the edge. And borrowing from software engineering, we kind of divided the life cycle into two, big, into two loops, the inner loop, everything that happens while the model is being trained, how do you gather the data, prepare it, train it, and experiment, up to the moment where the data scientist feels that the model is optimal to go to a production environment. And that's when we push out the model to some sort of registry and it's ready to be um, to put into production. And that's when the outer loop starts. And there we have a review process, uh, the process to build the actual model. We are leveraging containers because even though the edge, it's really different to cloud native. Everybody expects to have the kind of same experience, to have services, to have a, a, a self-service console, et cetera, um, to deployment, to serving the model, to model monitoring. And as we said, uh, all of the designs needed to account for the fact that any of these operations or any of these stages on the life cycle of the model could move along the continuum from the cloud to private cloud to virtual to physical to edge. So we have started with some customers they had initially like a, a supermarket. They wanted to put 
a AI inference in each one of the cameras, then they realized that it had, they had hundreds of cameras in just one store, so it was very expensive, so they decided to move the analytics to the server room, so the same service has to be capable of traveling uh, these different capabilities. Um, and for that, we found that the best way to provide consistent operations in management and observability capabilities was to leverage uh, something like Kubernetes through uh, OKD and Microsoft. So this is more or less the life cycle that we ambition for uh, deploying models at the edge. We start with a model that's been trained somewhere. In this case, could be a cloud, uh, a cloud service from any provider. It could be locally. It could be on VS Code. Once the uh, training part has finished, the next step is to register that model into a registry. And for registry, uh, there are um, they're starting to being standards. So we have hogging phase to this public registry, ba most basically for Gen AI and LLMs and things like that. But we also have uh, other model registries for more like predictive AI. So things like MLflow. Um, we in Red Hat are actually starting a new project inside the Kubeflow community to uh, have a new model registry that's open source. Uh, or it could be something as simple as S3 or even Git to be able to version your model. So once the model is trained, it's pushed out to the model registry, it's tagged as ready for production. And that's where we think it's very important to be able to automate all of the operations that happen later on. So we are using OpenShift, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, OKD pipelines based on Tekton to build a container image that has the inference service. We provide uh, model runtimes that are certified and come from secure sources. So you have things like OpenBeano that can leverage not only GPUs, because that's very expensive computing. So for some predictive models, mainly used uh, at, the, at the edge to do predictive maintenance and visual inspection, you don't really need uh, sometimes GPU. So we leverage also CPU acceleration. And that uh, pipeline, finally, what it produces is um, set of containers, uh, because it's a microservice architecture, where you have not only the model and the model runtime, you also have services to do lifecycle management, um, observability, monitoring, and all of these services are opt-in services. So depending on what layer of edge are you going to be landing, you can have less or more uh, of these services. If, if you have totally constrained resources and you are deploying to an antenna in the middle of nowhere, uh, you can just deploy basically the model and start doing inference there. So we're going to see a little um, video of how do we build the pipeline. So, yes, exactly. So here we have OKD and we are using Tekton pipelines uh, where we basically an MLOps persona will be in charge of either triggering the pipeline when the data science teams hands off the finished model, or you can also have triggers pre-configured so that it's completely automatic, the, automatic the way that once the model is tagged as ready for production, then the CI pipeline uh, is triggered. So we download the model. Uh, we have built some integration components to S3 or to Git. So the only thing that the pipelines need to know is where is the model located. Um, once it fetches the model, it um, clones the container repo, all of the things that needs to actually produce in container. And here is uh, very important that these pipelines could be customizable because for Edge, uh, one of the important aspects is around security. So you can do things like sign uh, the container image that's produced, you can encrypt it, uh, you can add compliance or regulation um, extra steps to build that model. And um, yeah, that's a little bit of what we're seeing. At the end, what we will produce is our inference service that's completely containerized that will have all of these uh, additional services for management and observability uh, and will be OCI compliant so you can uh, register it or use something like Quay to distribute it to the different edge locations. Okay, so if 
you're not lost, or if you are. So what we were just showing is three and four here. And what we're getting ready to show now is uh, kicking off five, which will push our uh, inference service container image to uh, something such as Quay and image registry or whatever you choose to bring as your image registry. And then as well as kick off a PR for the MLOps persona to be able to check that and uh, decide whether it's good for production and to merge it. So if you wanna show that one. So as I was saying here too in the picture, you don't have to use Quay, you can bring your own model registry. Um, you can do PR automation if you'd like to so that it automatically merges, but in our case, we wanted to make sure that the MLOps engineer ensures that it's production ready and can go out to the edge. And it's really basically that simple. <laughs> do you want to say anything on these right here? Nature both of Kubernetes and GitOps. So we make sure that nobody at the edge is, you know, configuring something directly through the UI or the CLI. So a lot of the use cases we're seeing is that there is not, as of today, an edge provider the same way that there is a cloud provider. So basically we're seeing that either cloud providers are trying to offer that space uh, to uh, as, an, an, as an edge provider, so like AWS or uh, some telcos. And we're also seeing very specific industry-specific solutions. So people ship out some appliance to some factory and they don't have any visibility on what is happening there. So to be able to ensure that whatever was intended to run there is exactly what is running, this declarative uh, um, pattern, it's, it's really important for us. Um, and then the second one is because GitOps kind of doesn't need for a central hub to be constantly connected to the edge node. You have at the edge a controller that's kind of like the brain that's constantly pulling and, 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 and asking the hub, is there a new version? Is there a new version? The communication is inverted, which really fits the edge use case where you don't know when are you going to be connected or you don't know when the edge node is gonna phone back. So we, we found that pattern really helpful. Um, one thing is that all of these are really, uh, again, uh, try, taking best practices of software engineering and applying them to AI. And what we are adding is ODH is an AI platform that lives on top of Kubernetes. So all of this is fully automated. Uh, the, the, the users don't have to stitch together whatever controller they want to use. In our case, we're using Argo CD. Uh, they don't have to stitch together uh, the, the observability and everything else. We kind of done that and automated all of that for, for the users. Okay, here we are. So once we were able to build that container image, put it in a registry so it can be distributed, the next piece is, uh, in this case, Argo CD. It's the implementation that we use, and it's because we're working a lot with that community to have agents that can really fit very constrained environments, so they are gonna have uh, an agent with a smaller footprint, and it's constantly watching for changes. And then for lifecycle ma management, we are leveraging OCM capabilities, and that's what's really, Observing at the hub, uh, how many edge nodes do you have? So once the uh, GitOps part is completed, the PR was submitted and accepted, we can see on the o OCM console that we can get the list of all of the edge nodes that are out there. And we can visualize them there. And OCM is already prepared to constantly ping or, or have a, uh, a cron that's constantly looking uh, which of the edge nodes are reporting back and updating uh, their states and what do they have deployed. So we can see here, we have just two, uh, the local one, which is our hub or core, and we have the edge node uh, also deployed. So again, all of these things are not new to uh, deploying things on Kubernetes. We are just taking the same experience to the edge, 
automating uh, the whole thing. And we are also treating AI workloads like any other workloads. So you can, you know, so users don't have to use different processes to deploy different things at the edge. Okay, so as Mary was saying, so OCM can do management between the core and the hub. Um, and of course, we have to allow for interconnectivity, you know, intermittent connectivity. We're not assuming that it's always up. So the, actually the ACM spoke will intermittently try to reach back and say, am I still supposed to run? Is there anything else I need to do differently? Um, typically we wouldn't imagine that that would happen, but the key thing is now that we have our um, edge deployed, Argo CD sits there and starts pinging the um, GitOps repo to say, hey, is there anything that I need to update? If there is, uh, they can bring in the image, the new image or whatever it's told to download, push that to the um, uh, inference service as containers, and those sit there and run. One of the things that we're showing here too at the edge is that we've used open telemetry in order to gather whatever metrics we decide we wanna gather. Do we wanna monitor uh, the edge health, the CPU, the usage? Do we wanna monitor any of the model uh, metrics, whether or not those things are, um, you know, is every, everything going okay with the, uh, with the models at the edge? And this data, of course, can also, with open telemetry, it's really cool, it has some pre-processing of data because at the edge, you may not be able to gather a whole lot if you're, especially if you're having intermittent connectivity and it can do some pre-processing. Uh, even in some instances, there may be secure data that you wanna uh, process out of that before you send it back to a hub or even in there, you can send it to a Splunk device or wherever you want to send. So it's very flexible. In this case, we were just showing this one instance where we're gonna send it back to the core, uh, to Prometheus. So everything over here running is just whatever we packaged together to be deployed at the edge in our instance, Argo CD, the OCM, um, open telemetry, and of course our, uh, our model. Yeah, in this uh, packaging, in, in ODH, I mean, this is the way we found easier to implement the whole flow uh, for operating a model, but it's not um, prescriptive. So if, you know, we are in an environment with, where maybe there is no Kubernetes and it's only, there's only support for containers or so something like Rail and Podman, we can change the implementation and instead of using Argo CD, we could use something like Ansible Playbooks to automate all of that intelligence or controller piece. If, I don't know, the hardware is very specific, we can add more customization using other tools like, I don't know, customize to account for very, um, of the specificity of, you know, as, of the edge nodes and the use case uh, of, the, uh, of the user. Um, something also really cool about uh, the open telemetry is that we are working to adding intelligence with AI as well to the telemetry so we can do things like summarization, we can detect, we can do anomaly detection so you just send uh, information when you know that, you know, something is happening or, or you just send the insight instead, instead of all of that uh, data. So the dashboards look something like this, uh, let me... And again, this is a representation we have uh, with Grafana. Uh, we're using uh, also uh, Prometheus. But since we're following the standards based on open telemetry, this could very easily be integrated with other uh, monitoring solutions like by cloud providers, New Relic, Datadog, some of the ones that are uh, sponsoring this event. And you wouldn't have to do anything neither to your model or anything else to, to be able to integrate with those type of solutions. So we can see uh, some of the uh, metrics around health of the process itself. And all of these metrics are given by the um, model runtime itself. We actually didn't do anything to, to that packaging, but we are working now on instrumenting that container so we can get more specific uh, metrics for the model performance, or we can 
pass metadata on the model about the use case. So if it's a predictive maintenance uh, model, we can have metrics very specific to that uh, use case, and we can configure them through uh, instrumentation using, again, the open telemetry standard. So we can, uh, I think right now what we're seeing is the open telemetry path and the CRD, just to showcase that we can have as many, um, we can send that to uh, as many receivers. In this case, we have uh, Prometheus. And inside of Red Hat, we, we use Observatorium, so we are also sending them there. Uh, we're sending them locally to our Prometheus because, you know, maybe whatever the edge location is, there is someone that's managing the infrastructure and they will need to know if, if something's wrong. So you can configure it and, and customize it as much as, uh, as you want. So I think that's all we have. I don't know if there are any questions. Oh, yes, it's hard to see. I can't, I can't see anything. <laughs> These lights are really intense. Hi, you had the last mile provider also marked as potential boundary because customers tend to use that to air gap their systems. Um, is all of your stack on one side or the other when you have this boundary, or do you currently assume you don't have that boundary or solved it somehow by carrying USB drives or something else? Yes, so we, this use case, it's, we chose a use case based on what we're seeing most commonly in the market, but we, all of the, the components don't have to be in either side of the last mile connection. So we are working with, uh, on designs that could be portable and we are leveraging containers to be able to do that. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, very good talk. I was curious whether you've gotten to the feedback loop where you need to sort of retrain based on the data in the field because sort of understanding what are the constraints around doing that. You mentioned it might be air gapped or whatever, but uh, have you gotten to exploring that with users yet? Yes, so we have different users. Uh, the majority are training the model on cloud environments with cloud providers because it's the, the less resistance path and they are using all these services that basically do all the training for them. And there we are working on having all of these pipelines that are triggering the, the steps to be event driven. So whenever you have an event of, you know, the, your, your model's performance is decaying the edge could send that event back and that can automatically trigger uh, either a message to the data scientist to tell him you need to train this again. Or we have use cases where uh, it's very common now to, to find solutions that are like edge in a box and all of this life cycle is happening at the edge. So whenever, oh, sorry, yes, oh, No, so you're saying, yeah, you trigger an event saying you should go look at it as opposed to feeding the data out. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, well, there are other use cases where on the same appliance you're collecting the data. So whenever you see the model performance decaying, you go and trigger an event to, to see what extra data or what more data have you gathered in that period of time. And with that, again, you have like an overall orchestration engine saying, okay, we have more data, we need to start again with the training, with the model validation, and then we're gonna do the CI and the T and, and so on. Uh, there are other customers or, uh, that are using uh, the data or, or the inference data to do labeling. So once you detect that you have outliers or data that it's out of distribution that, you've, that the model has never seen during the training, you take that data and you have labeling uh, tools close to the near edge and you start uh, labeling there to reuse it, to train it again. So there are multiple use cases, but basically what we want is to give the ability to detect when you need to do a retraining, whether it's for model performance or just you have new data and the ability to automate the whole thing. Any other questions? Well, that's all. Hope you guys like it. Thank you so much.